Hello, hello guys and dolls and welcome back. So, just want to say at the beginning of this video, I do have the fan on. It's really, 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 really hot in here and I'm about to sweat out my curls. My little disco do that I've got going on. Ugh. I have no idea what possessed me on like the day that it was 90 degrees to do like a full cake face and like, you know, some sexy disco hair and all that, but... make this video to sort of clarify some things um, just in my current you know state of mind after my mom has passed away I, I kind of view the world a little bit differently and um, you know all and I, I'm not trying to make like a boohoo sad video but it's just a general fact that when something like that happens you do tend to see the world differently and more to the point I've always sort of had this attitude on YouTube of like never over explain anything don't apologize for things that don't need to be apologized for because there's just no need uh, but in the world of YouTube, things get complicated, um, sometimes it feels a little bit like a one-sided conversation because I record this video and then you guys comment back, and I can comment back to an individual, not a group, and all that, so I generally don't make these kinds of videos where I would just sort of come on here, this isn't like a frequently asked questions video or anything, it's just sort of like a clarification of the terms of service of my channel. YouTube. As I'm coming back to doing videos and stuff, I am noticing all these makeup trends, right? There's clown contouring. What? Clown contouring? I don't get that at all. Like, I just totally, like, the other trend that has, like, been really popular is strobing, which is, like, girl, that's highlight. Okay, I get it. It's kind of dumb that it has to have a new name, but that's, like, a very, like, Mac thing to do. Like, Mac would always have, like, oh, we're gonna call this new skin trend cashmink, and all it means is freaking matte skin, okay? Don't try to you know, don't gild the lily. That's how I feel about strobing. But with contour contouring, I feel like I don't get it. I feel like, are they trolling us? Are they sincere? Does anyone know? Can you tell me? <laughs> I feel like I've been out of the loop for so long and I'm coming back and, you know, there's always makeup trends. Um, and most of the time I'm sort of there when they originate. So I can kind of go, yeah, I get that. Or, yeah, I don't really care for that. But I feel like I'm coming back and it's like this alien territory of all these different trends and should I try to keep up? Do I even want to? And I think we all know that the answer to that is no. No, not really. I've never been one to just participate in trends just because they're there. I've never been the one to, you know, go along with the crowd, go with the status quo. I think we know that um, you know, every awards season there's like 500 Kira Knightley or Kate Winslet or whoever had the hot makeup that awards season. There's gonna be a million tutorials. And I'm not saying that celebrity makeup isn't difficult. Of course it is. You gotta make those people look gorgeous on the red carpet for long periods of time. Make sure that they don't have like, you know, a white powder situation. Nicole Kidman. You know, I feel like a lot of times you can tell that someone's faking enthusiasm in those videos or like, yeah, so... I'm doing this Kate Winslet tutorial because her makeup was really pretty and it was really popular is what they're really not saying and they're and they're doing it for you know the view counts and I've just never been one to do that I have done celebrity makeups because it's either a celebrity I really admire or I think that their makeup was really bitchin like if something is undeniably cool I'm gonna get on that shit I mean if it's cool yeah let, let's why not why wouldn't we it's something that I know that you guys have noticed because you guys are always telling me that I'm not like other YouTubers and I don't think it's just about me having pink hair although I had pink hair way before the trend I'm just saying I'm just saying I started that trend and then I was like okay well I'm gonna go blonde now that everyone's going pink and then I was like no but really I'm, I'm a pink girl this is me but anyway I you know you guys are always telling me you know that you recognize that I'm so different from other YouTubers and then you know I want to go like oh no 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 you know Stop. Tell me more. Really, it's a source of pride for me because what it means is that you guys see that I am not just doing things to be part of a trend. I am not just reviewing products positively to be part of a trend. One thing you guys always remark is that whether a product is sent to me for free or if I purchase it myself, I give an honest review. I don't care, frankly. Um, <laughs> and companies probably don't want to hear that, but if you, know, if you think that you can just send me some free lipstick and that I'm just going to say it's like the best thing in the world when it sucks. I'm sorry, honey, no. I have too high a standard, really, for my channel, for what I will share with you guys, what I'm willing to recommend to you, because I've been doing this for seven years. This isn't some fly-by-night, get-rich-quick, get-internet-famous, use YouTube as a stepping stone to become an actress or something. That That's not what this is for me. This is the thing. I'm obsessed with makeup. I love that I get to talk about it, and I'm not going to jeopardize my reputation that I've built over these seven years 
just to talk about some, you know, some crap. And, and, and you know, people get really mad about sponsorships, and I want to talk about sponsorships. You have no idea how much stuff YouTubers get offered. It's obscene. The amount of money that we are offered to talk about things, and also the ridiculously vile scamming things in my eyes anyway i'm very very sensitive to you know sharing anything with you guys that turns out to be a scam or anything like that because i'm like hell no i don't i don't want to feel like feed my subscribers to the wolves that, that's another thing too is that there's companies that like email you every freaking day to be like hey you know do our you know whatever the product is and it's just like it's a harassment at a certain point where you're like i've said no i don't want to review this you have to stop emailing me um but in any case we just we get offered so much stuff so it really boils down to whether or not you trust that YouTuber because everyone's doing sponsored videos at this point and it's just it is the name of the game it's how you make money on YouTube um, it's how you do YouTube as a job and if you are only doing YouTube as a hobby and you're able to have a successful channel and never ever do a sponsored video more power to you and I really admire that but for the rest of us this is a job and in order to make enough money to pay our bills sometimes we have to do sponsored videos but on the flip side of that there are so many great things that are offered in addition to all the crap because there I mean the crap is like 90% of what you're offered at like 10% you're like oh yeah totally let's do that it's a way for me to make money the, the companies get exposure from it it's a symbiotic relationship and I know some people are kind of pissed off about the fact that YouTube has become this big advertising thing it just boils down to who you trust there are millions of youtubers here on YouTube you know we're all doing more or less the same thing and if you feel like you can't trust me or you can't trust Bob or you can't trust Sally find another channel and watch that you know you don't have to tear somebody down like oh this person always lies in their videos and da 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 because we're offered so much stuff I really don't think there's too many people that are just doing stuff just to do something that pays I think I think that generally speaking though you guys would be surprised at some of the stuff I've said no to big dollar amounts to talk about things that at the end of the day I didn't feel like they were on brand for me or they were things that I don't think would be helpful for you guys or most importantly I feel like it's a scam or it's somehow a um like sharky enterprise I'm like mm, I'm not I'm not we're not doing that it's just it's just not worth my reputation and ruining the best job in the world which is you know being able to sit here talk about really deeply important things like like lipstick and hair dye and clothes in all seriousness by talking about these trivial things I'm able to kind of peek the door into people's self-esteem you know by teaching a girl how to do the perfect eyeliner flick it might give her more confidence make her feel more flirty and help her express her inside on the outside I'm able to inspire people to play with their makeup and get creative and do artistic crazy fun stuff seeing some of the people that are subscribed to me seeing you know your makeup evolve over time is so inspiring some of you are like so talented I'm like damn I wish I could do that and that's just um, for someone who is essentially a makeup teacher it's actually really rewarding and just a little bit jealous <laughs> you know in terms of like my fashion stuff you know I get a lot of hatery done that because oh here's a fat girl trying to look sexy well guess what there's a lot of fat girls out there and some of them are sexy and you just have to deal with it you know I end up doing so much good with that because you know while on, on the surface you're like this is just like a clothing haul what good is this doing but you know when you're seeing someone who looks like you and you're you're being represented and you're seeing hey here's this person who is fat and she's awesome and that means that I can maybe be awesome too and I can't tell you how many people I've touched with that in fact you guys know because those of you who are watching who are in those shoes have told me how much I've helped you and it makes me feel so good and it's that is the best part of this job is knowing how I help people knowing that I am putting these positive vibes out there and I'm changing things in a, in a small little way you know and doing something that I love it's great um, and that kind of brings me to my final discussion of this video I want to talk about my username uh, vintage or tacky it's a word or a phrase or a username that sort of it, it's sort of a head scratcher you know it doesn't have anything to do with makeup and I, I don't use my name as my YouTube uh, username although I don't hide my name anymore for a long time I hid my name it's Cora Avalar hello I mean I have thought about changing my username about 50 million times People are always talking me out of it and they're like that's your brand and I'm like well what do you think my username means and they're like you make video about vintage and tacky stuff and I'm like mm, kind of not really I don't know I, I guide yeah, there's no mission statement to my channel and yet there kind of is it's about not pigeonholing yourself it's about you know these two things that seem at odds with each other like vintage is thought of like classy and you know well put together or you know uh, 
old-fashioned and you know just held in a higher esteem and tacky is thought it was like loud and obnoxious and undesirable and definitely like classless something that's in poor taste and there are these two ideas it's like well how do these go together well hello um <laughs> you know i love vintage clothes i love old music i love you know vintage furnishings i love all those things but sometimes those things can also be tacky, which is actually where the original username came from because I worked at a thrift store and I, me and the girls that would work there would be like, is this vintage or tacky? You know, and, and do we care? It's like, do we like it anyway? Um, and there's this, there's this line between something being like, you know, tacky and retro and like, and then vintage and classy and oh, that's a, that's good vintage, you know? Um, but who draws that distinction? Who gets to be the tastemaker? I say we're the tastemakers. You decide what you like. And that's why I say be vintage or tacky, just be yourself. And it's really not about being actually vintage or tacky. It's about finding what works for you and making it your own. Along with that, I found this little charm that my mom had in like a coin purse. And it said, be your own kind of beautiful. And I just really like that phrase. So I'd like to sort of incorporate that into my outros from here on out. We're just going to try it out, see how it feels. So and until next time, remember to be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you. Bye, 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 bye.